Who are you? Hi, I'm, I'm Robert Fontaine. Uh, I'm a writer director and I'm also the uh, principal organizer of the East Northeast International Film Festival, taking place here on October 10th through the 14th, 2019. Now, what do you do, though? <laughs> what do I do? <laughs> I do many things. Uh, you mean what is my involvement in the in the festival? Or what? What's my? What's apart from writing, directing? Apart from writing, directing, what do you do in your everyday life? Because we know how intriguing the jobs and the career path that you've been on is. But we want to know what you do when it comes to your personal. Robert Fontaine. The story is you. You mean with my free time in yeah. my life? Um, I've never known what that is like, uh, free time. Uh, I just have, we, we were just having this conversation off camera. Um, my wife said, if, uh, would tell me always, if I wasn't an artist, I'd probably, probably be a nut. And I have to agree with her because um, I'm constantly creating. Every, I treat everything I look at as uh, a work of art. Every day I marvel at the light that crosses my room. It's never the same from minute to minute. It changes every day, every second. I sometimes wake up my son at 6 o'clock in the morning at 6 years old. He doesn't get it yet. But I'm trying to train him to appreciate the changing of light, how light falls off in the corner of a room when the sun moves across the wall. You know, sunsets. The way a door opens, the sound it makes from day to day, all those things are constantly going in my head. And the relationships, I'm constantly observing people, trying to draw information from them, character studies, creating, and you know, trying to understand my place in this whole canvas that we call the world. And it's here, it's alive, Newburgh. So um, that's, that's what I do with my own life. Just constantly reinvent and create life for myself, so. <laughs> That's amazing. Now, what made you look at Newburgh as the location for you to start this renaissance that you are directly the result of? I was looking for a city to come and set up shop in um, where I can completely get away from the whole New York scene um, having been 35 years in the business as a working actor I was very blessed um, to have worked as much as I did um, I got out of the acting scene to write and direct because I was disillusioned with what, the way the business was, was going and we were systematically being desensitized over the last 20 years to accept mediocrity the studios have completely dumbed the audiences down uh, you know, and, and uh, I guess their justification is they have a machine to keep running. And what is there always a never-ending supply of is mediocrity. So if you condition people to kind of lower their standards, then you can always produce this garbage all the time. So hence the formula thing came up. I was a true film guy. Um, subtlety, nuance, storytelling, the interaction of people you know, their life stories. Why are we here for these two hours in the moment of the greatest conflict of these characters? That's what fascinated me, it's fascinated me as a filmmaker. And everyone has those stories. So I thought if I was ever going to be a part of something significant, I would try to have to create it myself. You know, not that I would, I, what I write or direct or offer is anything spectacular, but, you know, I just I went on my own. So fast forward, I was looking for a place to do my next film. And, um, I visited many uh, cities in the Hudson Valley. None so much uh, has affected me as Newburgh did. Um, and it was, I have to thank my wife for that because we were detoured uh, through Newburgh uh, because of construction on the road on 9W, which is the road that takes you up north on the side of the river. We were on our way to Kingston because we were looking at a little place to buy. And the taxes were so disproportionate, it didn't make any sense. So my wife said, what about that city we took a detour from, that Newburgh place? And I just turned around and said, that war zone? You know, because it looked like a war zone when I drove by. Uh, but we came back through here, and we drove up and down the streets, and then I started to see all this beautiful architecture. And uh, 
there was there was life. It was poetry. The distress. The uh, within blocks of each other, you had these beautiful mansions, wonderful architecture, and you had this decay. And there was like an unseen energy in this city. It was, it was palpable, you know. And I thought, this is it. This is where I want to be. This is where I want to bring my work. This is where I want to, uh, you know, spend my uh, next few years uh, you know, bringing a, a stimulus to the city. Ha you know, hence I, I started researching Newburgh, and I realized it was in the far recesses of, recesses of my mind. The history of Newburgh is incredible. And, then, you know, you learn about it in school, but it's only touched upon. It's like a, a footnote. But wow, all the things that have come out of this city. Revolution, writers, inventors, the first silver screen for the movies was made here in Newburgh. First mattress, box spring, you know, you name it. Um, so many things, if you could look. Our first major American box office, uh, biggest box office draw came out of Newburgh, William S. Hart, silent movie ever. He was the highest, biggest box office draw of the time, came from Newburgh. Uh, you know, you can go on and on and, and discover so many things about Newburgh. And, and it's almost been completely lost, but there's still enough here to, to salvage and to, you know. That's interesting that you say that now. So, that there's enough here in Newburgh to salvage. How has the community reacted to such a presence like you coming in here with an idea and then actually putting it in motion? And years later, you have results of proof of your work. How's the community responded to you? I used to know uh, what the community. Um, uh, I know that the community that I first met when I was here, they're still here, but now it's been overtaken by so many people with projects. So many people have moved up from the city. Um, so many uh, things are going on that I've lost track and I've not kept up. I do know that the old guard, the people that first embraced my idea of bringing not only film, but this film festival was part of a five-year plan. I was supposed to do three movies, but it just grew so quickly that it felt it needed to happen sooner than later. Um, they embraced it 100%. Uh, the whole city's behind uh, the vision, the mayor, city council. It's long-standing residents, the artists that have been here or here since I got here who you know, and the ones who came after the film who knew about what I've done. Everybody supports it. And if it works, if this really works, um, it's going to be one of the greatest places to be for nine days every year. Uh, we have the river, we have the international airport, we have the, the Metro North. More than any other festival, and you can research this, it's strategically located. It's there's no other place that can put up a festival in a terrain like this. The way it's geographically set up, um, like Newburgh. So the opportunity here to bring the world here is incredible. Airport, New York City, Albany, Toronto. It's great. It's great, and they see it. Um, you know, festivals are a noble business, and it is a business, but you have to have, uh, you have to look beyond the money. It's, it's what that will enable to do. Revitalize the, the city itself, restoration projects, educational projects, um, you know, places for, uh, you know, revitalization, green tech. You know, this could be, uh, it's, it's ripe, ripe, it's ripe for, for, uh, for it being a model city in all of these things. You know, entertainment, film, music, all that stuff is just, just the tip of the iceberg. Yeah. We're trying to, hopefully by year th four or five, if not sooner, uh, have a global collaborative. People coming through here and, and making stuff happen, if not presenting. You know their ideas here from all over the world, so that's 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 the hope. That's the bigger. Vision. Well, that's amazing. Now, next question: You're you're a project guy. You're always making something new. The new project 
with the building that you're working on, you directly have your hands involved in turning the community. You know, what you've done with your house, the parish house alone is a work of art, elevating the community that you so believe in. You know, tell us a little bit about the other building and this project while you're also juggling the intensity of being this organizer for such a huge vision of a festival that you have here. Um, I never, uh, I, well, let me go back really quickly. Uh, I put myself through school by working with my father. My father was a builder, and I hated it. That summer months of getting in there and building and cutting, and, and him, I, I, was la I was first man in on every construction project, and I was the last guy out. And he would always stand over my shoulder, and if anything wasn't done right, he'd say, that wasn't done right, you gotta do it over. And I would always say, well, nobody's gonna see it. It doesn't matter, it's not done right. Pride of workmanship. You'll know it's not done right. Yeah. I never understood where that, uh, the value of that until I started doing these projects. Um, you speak of that carriage house. When I bought that carriage house and I decided to put my money where my mouth is, I moved onto one of the streets that were con was considered one of the most violent streets yeah, across the country. First and Lander. And uh, uh, every day I'd get up on that ladder work on that house and I would witness guys uh, beating each other up, shooting each other. One guy was so cracked out he ran across the street. I didn't have a fence to my backyard. He went right into my backyard and just died, had a heart attack. Um, that house brought a lot of hope for a lot of people in the city. It was the first real major renovation project. I did it all with just another person. Um, so much so it inspired the city that they set up the land bank up the block. And the land bank was helping people get into these uh, low-income homes, but they would, um, how it's structured is that they would provide um, financing for the revitalization, but you had to be in a certain income medium. So uh, they set up right up the block from, from me, and uh, every day, the door was knocking, can we walk someone through your house, you know? It was one of those, uh, anyway. Uh, lots of ha lots of things have happened since then. Uh, the film, my film project, uh, my third film, Me America, came in the middle of that. Uh, since then, I have invested in a property across the street. It's a three-story apartment building with two commercial spaces. Uh, I hope that it's going to be a commercial space that serves the community. If uh, we're looking at some cul a culinary uh, experience that is a place for everyone, everyone. Um, and uh, it's one more building that gets saved, one more part of our history in this city because it is our history. Newburgh is very much part of our history, our American history. And every one of these buildings needs to be saved. Um, and uh, I'm just, uh, just impassioned about doing that. So, I don't know. It's more, more information than you need. But it's never more information. I'm going to say this listening to you speak is is fantastic now as far as the way you keep it all together your process all these projects all objections all positive results all the whole beautiful messy picture that you love to describe the chaos of and how you figure out how to make that into something full-fledged art tangible teaching your son the way you look at things to cultivate that relationship how is it that you get through all that? Your process of containing yourself and being Robert Fontaine. He might have just left the room, I don't know, because... <laughs> uh, no, okay, so that's a very good question. I tell you what, um, I don't know at one point uh, that craziness of mine, the knowing, okay, I am an artist. I'm an artist. Everybody in this room, I think, is an artist. I see something artistic about everybody here. Um, but life is a test. It's the greatest art project the universe has put, put together. Every day is a test. It's, it's, a, it's, it's, a, it's a test. And once we realize that, and we recognize it, as much as we want to rail against things not happening for us, and why didn't, you know, we realize later on, Thank God it didn't happen because I wouldn't have gotten this. So if we learn that 
lesson every day, sometimes when we fight against a moment, we're really fighting against the universe because the universe is saying it's not time. So that's a lifelong lesson. That's every day. That's a, that's a weed we have to keep pulling out of the garden. You know, I don't know how I keep it together because I don't keep it together. Some days I lose it. Some days I, I want to slip my veins. And, but as an artist, I have a responsibility to create these projects for other people to find joy and uh, hopefully bring a little life and inspiration. You know, and if I've done that in a very small way, I've done my job. So that keeps me going. You know, you know what this building will be for, to somebody else, uh, I, I just know that I'll put my mark on it and it's for the community. There it is. On to the next thing. So all these things keep me alive. And my son, my greatest gift, my greatest blessing, my six-year-old kid. Yeah, seeing that kid grow every day, it just, it's just a marvel. You know, he surprises me. It's... Beautiful. Children are just, they, they get you back into reality. You know, so, yeah. That's beautiful. So, your balancing of your entertainment life, your balancing of your projects that you meld with that, and family is very impressive. Now, the passion, that little spark when you spoke about your son, that was so powerful. You're, you're working on a festival that. For your son, he's going to see you do it. And you see that spark when you talk about him. What do you want your son to learn from your life and your experiences? Don't become an actor. Don't become a director. Don't become... <laughs> uh, You know, what our parents want for us is always going to be different than what we want for ourselves. It doesn't really matter what I want from him. He's going to eventually just find what he wants for himself. As long as he's happy. And he loves what he does. And he's excited every day to get up and dust himself off if things don't work and go at it again. Happiness, I guess, I don't know. Now, I was told that you are fond of piss and vinegar in the veins. Explain that. I love insta primal uh, emotions, primal instincts. You know, I love confrontation. I love provoking. I love trying to get people to rip the chains and shred the layers people I just want people to step out of the facade that they've created from them for themselves yeah that's what I love that's the, the piss and vinegar find the piss and vinegar in everybody you know we live in a vol volatile world I mean just because we put on pants we go in our little houses we put on a TV it's still, a, it's still a fucking, it's primitive. We're, we're still primitive people. We still want to take a bite out of something. Perfect. So, so three <laughs> words to describe the festival though. Just three words to describe the festival. I, this interview was more for me than for you. I am so sorry. I, I know, know, it's that. turning into a documentary this here. Is, it, it, it is, <laughs> this is exciting. Huh? So just three words to wrap it up. How best would you describe Eddie? Now that you took us on this journey all over through your life, and now we're back again to Eddie. Three words to describe it in closing. Well, before those three words, I want to say something more. Uh, just elaborate a little more about the process. Um, e and &E is just a continuation of what was happening here before I showed up. Because someone else had a vision. They showed up, they, you know, 1620, they, the ship docked here. And someone looked at this hill and said, okay, we're going to set this up here. Someone else came, brought a business. Brought, uh, writers came, architects came. 
maybe we all have been here in another life and we've all been brought back once again to help rebuild this great experiment. I mean, I, I truly believe that. There's a reason why we're all here right now doing this. And that's what I want to do is want to look around the corner. So I want to continue the greatness that this region, this city gave to the world. First municipality to ever receive electricity. You know, everything down from print to architecture, you know, uh, all the twine and rope that was given and created for one of the greatest engineering projects of the time, the Brooklyn Bridge. I mean, you can go on and on about the history of this place. It deserves to be on the map again, you know, um, but the community needs to feel good about where they live and be proud of where, who they are and create a community where everybody is living, working, and thriving and making something happen here. I don't know. That's, that's what I see. And so in three words, <laughs> uh, inspire, uh, revitalize, that third word be um, and this is just for E&E &E, right the vision of E&E &E. to, to, uh, to innovate innovate yeah innovate yeah <laughs> look at him go he's giving me the fist pump uh, yeah so those are the three three words uh, uh, yeah last question this is just personal what's your favorite color I just need to I'm not going to answer that <laughs> never gonna know. Can I answer that? Very good, Troy. It has been. It's been the color of the day. I know Ron doesn't think it's a nice color for the T-shirts. He's like, no seafoam green fits. <laughs> Remember that uh, at Burger King? Yes, I've been to Burger King. Uh, the, the woman, I think she was the manager behind the counter. She had a, a seafoam green type of shirt. It was a little intense, but I thought a little toned down would be a great festival shirt. That is our retro color. At least for the crew, right? And staff. Mm -hmm. Seafoam green. Today it's seafoam green. Tomorrow it's <laughs> fusion. Great. Well, thank you so much, Robert, for your time. Uh, I'm sure that the audience is going to love hearing all that you got going on. We just got to write the rest of the documentary, that's all. Let's do it, baby. All right. <laughs> Thank you.